Hey guys, it's insight number four, I think. I haven't got any notes this week, so it's just been one of those weeks and I just didn't get notes, but I do have some points to talk about, so I think this is insight number four. I don't even know if there'll be a five. We'll see. Um, so, <coughs> we're in Luke 5, and um, so he's already met Peter back before he got baptised. We went through that timeline in the first insight. So, when he turns up on the shores of Galilee... He's familiar with these people, but they don't know him exceptionally well, but they have met him before, so he's not a complete stranger. But he's about to call them to come follow him. Previous to this, they've been John the Baptist's like, disciples and followed him and listened to him and sat at his feet and listened to him preach. And that's how they met Christ. So now Christ is on the shore where they've been fishing, and you know, they go fishing at night, so this is in the morning probably, and they're mending their nets and tidying, and they've had a hard night, and it's been rough, and they've got like zero fish. And they're just sort of like, this is a hard life to live, but we're doing it, you know. This is our profession, this is our livelihood. So in verse 1 where it says that they stood by the lake of Gennesaret, that's just another name for Galilee, just a different word. Um, and there was two ships, the work day's over, well the work night's over. Um, and he walked into one of the ships, which was Simon's, which is Peter, um, and said, can you just thrust this out a little so I've got like a platform to preach to the people that have like followed me and gathered oh, he is doing weird things here that have gathered on the shore like can you just push your boat out a little so I've got like you know like now if we go into a chapel there's like a podium and a microphone and um we can all see them because they're a little higher than the congregation so that's what he was sort of after like just this little you know is it, is it too much you know, can you do that and, and of course Simon Peter's like yeah no, okay we'll, we'll go out there we'll do that um so he sat there, a lot off on the land, a small favour, a small favour, and he sat there and he taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, let's go a bit deeper and launch your nets. And like, you can see Simon thinking, um, I just worked all night, got nothing, have fixed and cleaned my nets, and you want me to throw them back in the water? And I'm exhausted already, right? But nonetheless, because he knows Christ enough at this point to say if he's a good quality, he's a good character, I, I do believe he is a son of God. don't quite know what that means entirely yet, maybe, but okay, let's do this. So they did. Because Simon says to him in verse 5, it says, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, how many times do we have that in our lives when we get an answer or we get a, a prompting of, of whatever it is? We read something and think, oh, that applies to me. Like, you know, and scripturally, we read it and we're like, that applies to me. And just that, how often do we say, but I have worked all night and it's done nothing and you want me to go again? Oh, you know, but okay, you asked, I will do, right? I imagine maybe even if I felt a bit like that when going back to the city yet again um, was just like, well, it hasn't worked yet, but if you say, I'll, I'll go, you know, because I know you'll provide a way. And maybe if I said it a bit more eloquently because he had some words. I don't know, different language, different words, right? Um, so they did this and they let it down and it was so full that the nets were going to break. And they beckoned into the partners who were on the other ship, come and help us bring all this in. And so, when they get all of this, so this is Simon, Peter, Peter, Simon who becomes Peter, um, and this is also uh, James and John, who is the son of Zebedee, so they're all together there, and they see this, um, and Andrew's in the same space, because he's part of them, uh, and then he says to them, you know, like, leave your nets, and come follow me, and he says, fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men, this is the end of verse 10, so it's like, I've shown you how I can help you catch fish. How easy it can be if I'm with you. But don't just think small. Think bigger. And leave behind what you know and come find completeness in Christ and I will help you fish men and bring men to Christ and, and be baptized and be saved. And they just, when they had brought their ships to land, they just left it all. And they followed him. They left their industry, their livelihoods, everything. Now, these guys had, some of them had families. Um, they had 
people to support, but they're like, they knew this was the, the bigger thing. So it goes from a small favour to leaving behind what you know, where you trust the Lord to, you know, take you out of your comfort zone and go actually fish again when you've been trying, trying, trying and nothing happened. And the Lord's like, well, I want you to try again. And you're like, oh, really? But okay. And then it works. Um, sometimes eventually, sometimes it still takes us a while, but it does eventually hurt. And then to find that complete list in following Christ and just saying, look, you know, you get to that point where you're like, it doesn't matter, Heavenly Father and Jesus, I will do whatever you need me to do. Because in living that way, the rest of my life becomes quite good and quite easy to do. Even though some of it's still really hard and frustrating, it's a lot better. So, yeah. Um, that's, that's what I put there. So I've also put up the top here, um, Peter in a bad day mind mood, you know, like he's had a bad day mood, you know when you're in a bad day mood, so you're not actually a grumpy person, you're just like, oh, I had a mirror, it's a real nightmare today. Um, he says, it's, like, it's not a good idea, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it because you asked me to. Um, and it's like, we can do the same thing, you know, we can learn from the story and, and the way that he had that experience on the boat like that. There's a lot to be learned there, so have a look at that as well. Um, and I think that's it for today. So that, that's like four insights this week that I've sort of given you. Um, there's some really interesting things in there. And keep on reading. We're back into John next week. There's some awesome stuff. I, I love all the New Testament um, Gospels. There's just, if you know, if you want to get acquainted with Christ, yes, read the Book of Mormon, but then, you know, and I mean, Christ is throughout all scriptures. But this is where we see him actually interact face to face and teach parables and the sermon on the mount which was what we're going to get to in the next few weeks and the parables oh my gosh the parables amazing we can still learn so much from them i think probably my favorite 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 of all scripture things is parables one i love stories two i love creative storytelling which they're both and three i'm always looking for that message in something like what is the point of this what is the message what can i learn so i think that's why i love them so much but I really hope that you can and pray that you can find a hope, like a, a joy in them as well. Um, but that's my thoughts for this week. Again, sorry I didn't have any notes. Oh, and if you're looking for that timeline and you missed it at the beginning, it's all here. I printed this one out. You used to be able to get them from distribution. They came in the inside, but uh, I don't know of any distribution store that still has them. This goes through the entire New Testament. One of the sections is completely to the week that Christ comes back before he's crucified. And then it carries on after Christ's birth and Paul's ministry. So you'll find this in the 2003 Ensigns. That is 10 years ago. 2003 Ensigns. And it's in three parts. It's in January, April, and July. And just print that out or have it like handy. So you can like, when you're reading through and we're doing the, how we're doing now is to learn the lessons rather than the historical accuracy of it all. But this will let you know when each of those things happened. It gives you a timeline. Probably this page is better to look at. So, like, you've got this part here, and it's got all these little numbers. I don't know if you can see that. They little numbers there. And they apply down here, and they tell you what it is and where it's found. So it might be a really helpful teaching tool this year. Because um, I was just sort of thinking that the way we're learning this, although it's teaching us awesome things, kind of mixed up a bit how the order of things happened. Um, so if you're a little confused around, but I already thought he met them, and, and where did that, yeah, have a look at that. I think that will help a lot. So, great week. It's a really little short week of reading. Another really sort of ease into, but also some fantastic lessons to focus on. Whatever's going to work best for your class or your family or for you, focus on that and deep dive. And again, look at Elder Bedner's on Instagram, his live that he did around the characteristics of Christ. Um, Elder Bedner does Q&A from time to time and they're really good. Um, so yeah, that's on Instagram though. So if you don't have Instagram, find someone who does, have a look at that. It's not terribly long, I think 15 minutes and the, the last six minutes is on another topic. So yeah, the beginning part about the whole temptations of Christ there that Satan did. It's a really, really good thought from our beloved David A. Bedner. All right, love you guys. Stay safe. Have a good weekend. It's a holiday weekend here in New Zealand. Well, in Hamilton and Auckland, um, we get Monday off, which doesn't really make a difference for me, but... And the weather's terrible, by the way. But anyway, there we go. Um, for those of you that watch in New Zealand, have a safe weekend. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.